This reader interview is sponsored by the patrons of the Rereading Wolf podcast. So welcome to the first of these uh, listener interviews. We're talking to uh, Jordan Flato, rhymes with Plato, <laughs> and Jordan and I have talked to each other and conversed and never met, but for maybe 15, 20 years, maybe, yeah. on being on the Earth list. That's right. And it goes way back. Yeah. I've been wanting to do these for a long time, and Jordan has agreed to be the guinea pig, to be the first one. So if you're listening to this uh, later on, and you've heard some others, and the questions sound different or something like that, that's because this is the first time. And I suppose I've changed the questions a little bit due to experience. As the boxer and game theorist philosopher Mike Tyson said, everyone has a plan until they get hit in the face. And so, with no more ado, let us begin with the five questions. This is kind of inspired by the idea of in the actor's studio where they always had five set questions. Okay, so first question. Excellent. First encounter with a wolf story. So... I dove straight into the deep end. One of my really good friends from college, who was that friend that many of us had probably who introduced us to some of our favorite works of fiction, right? He early, early on in my days of diving into heavy literature, like, well, at the time seemed heavy, like Pynchon and threw David Foster Wallace at me. And, and I, I moved away to New York and probably, uh, this is about in 99, I think, and about a month after I got there, he sent me this frantic email saying, oh, my God, I found a book. You must get this right away. It's like a cross between Borges, uh, Nabokov, Proust, Tolkien. They all got in a room, took mushrooms together, wrote a masterpiece. <laughs> and I was completely intrigued. And, of course, it was Book of the New Sun. And so I furiously went and found a copy, I think it. Powell's. I kind of forget where it was, I, but I, I know I went and searched through a couple of places before I found it. And dove right in, and I never looked back. So, yeah, my first introduction was the the black hole centerpiece nexus of all wolf work. Wolf work. Oh, and I guess your reaction was favorable, wasn't it? Of exceptionally favorable. I, I don't know that I've fallen in love with an author as quickly as I fell in love with Wolf. It, kind of from the first, uh, from from the first sentences. And yeah, it was a, it was. I, I did not bounce off it. I know some people have sort of. And I've even, I've been a proselytizer of this book for, you know, since the second day I started reading it, but many people have tried to, to get into it, bounce off the first couple of books and, and don't really get into it until, you know, halfway through or something when they, when they really see the genius. But I, I certainly glommed on right away. It, it hit all my buttons for sure. Well, that was also uh, my first wolf story, but it's never really been my favorite. What's your, is this your favorite? It is. It is. To be to cheat a little, I would say the solar cycle as a whole is my favorite. I, I I know it's not one work, but it really feels like a singular work, even though they're so different. And and if you were to press me on two different days, I would say New Sun or Short Sun are my favorites for different reasons. But the whole work to me feels of a piece. It feels of a it feels singular. I absolutely agree with that. Yeah. I have particular theories on the threads that bind them but yeah but yeah i think that they are i i think they are quite integrated despite often seeming quite different and those differences i think are instructive right i mean you talk about the threads i think that i think that there's a lot to be seen in how they're different i think there's there's probably meaning in in that even aside from the fact that they were just written at completely different times i'm sure but i know it's a very pedestrian choice <laughs> and most of my answers in this are probably going to be pretty pedestrian i'm probably going to speak for the everyman in many ways but uh but yeah book of the new sun no no i I am an outlier, so that's probably <laughs> – most people are going to be just like you. Favorite wolf word? So, again, I'm going to be really pedestrian here. I, I, I'm going to cheat and say by sound, algidonic is my favorite word. I just love the way that sounds and the way it, that it trips off the tongue. But I think fuligen is one of the few words that's an actual wolf word. I, it doesn't exist outside of his lexicon, I think that anyone's proven anyway. It certainly has roots, but I love that word. And it's, it, the reason I say that now, although there's many other words that trip off the tongue more pleasingly, it's the one word that I've been desperate to enter the common lexicon because of all of these new blacker than black pigments that have come out. And it just makes me innerly furious 
that they keep coming up with these ridiculous names when Fulogen is right there on the table. And I just... Come on, Vanta Black versus Fulogen? It's, you know what? Give me a Fulogen. break. Sorry for the cursing here. I'm not sure if this is supposed to be family friendly, but yeah, it's it's ridiculous. So I, I, I would have to say Fulogen. And also just because it, there's so many of his words that they just don't know what they mean, but they've been out there for centuries. But that one, it seems to be sort of his own invention and I just love it. So there you go. Okay. A personal non-consensus theory about a wolf story or your favorite one. So again, fairly pedestrian here. Before I had read any of the theories about it, I was real certain that blue and green were some combination of earth and loon. And for myself, it bounced back and forth as to which one was which. And I'm not going to wax on about why I think that's so, but it just feels right to me, even though I know it makes no sense. I think I, I haven't dived into his whole theory, but I know Aramini has some good theories around this and a lot of people really disagree with it, but, but I'm not one of them yes. <laughs> so, for all sorts of reasons, um, both logistical because of the fractal nature of that work and metaphorical for all sorts of reasons, it just makes sense to me. So to me, it's Canon. I just don't quite know which one is which that, that bounces around in my head, but, um, the, 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 that's one of my favorite of the theories from that cycle in particular. Most frustrating mystery in a wolf story. Those damn ribbons on oh, Agilus's face. Oh, first, yes. <laughs> first time I read it, first time I read it, and I was like, what does that mean? There's going to, I know, I'm going to keep looking for this. There's going to be some answer down the line and just never. It's been really great to hear you guys <laughs> wrestle with that in the podcast. I, I was literally on the edge of my seat waiting. Okay, we're gonna talk about it. here come the ribbons, here come the ribbons, waiting for you guys going to say about it. And I'm, I'm pleased that you're as befuddled as I am because I just... It, it's so signposted in a way that so few of his riddles are. It's so signposted. And yet I have not yet found the, I mean, I can think of plenty of metaphorical answers for it, plenty of allegorical, whatever, but nothing concrete. And it drives me up a Bulletin. tree. So it will, come on. Well, where do you get off? <laughs> what are you getting at? You son of a bitch. <laughs> took it to his grave. He took it to his grave. <laughs> That's right. So I will probably demand that someone paint black ribbons on my face while I'm lying in state and <laughs> dead in my pocket. And then not explain it. And not explain it. Of course not. Of course not. No, absolutely. This was again entirely sponsored by the patrons of the Rereading Wolf podcast. You can go to patreon.com slash rereading wolf to play a part in bringing other amazing things like this into the world. And if you want to take on the five questions with us, reach out to us by email or one of the other methods listed in the show notes of this episode. We need to bring you closer to me, so don't you squirm.